So I want to bring in Dr. Barry Friedberg. He is a top-notch, well-known anesthesiologist who was recently questioned by Dr. Conrad Murray's defense attorneys. Now, I want to tell you about Dr. Friedberg a little bit. He's the founder and president of the Goldilocks Anesthesia Foundation and the author of the book, Getting Over, Going Under. He's here with me in L.A., and, and, and Dr. Friedberg, so great to have you here. Now, tell me first about this call that the defense made to you. And by the way, we've got your whole apparatus here. You know, show people how it's normally administered, the drug propofol. But tell me first about the conversation you have with the, with the uh, defense attorneys. Uh, Mr. Flanagan mm -hmm. is one of the defense attorneys, and he asked me to come up to his office in Glendale in the attempt to get me to become a witness to testify in favor of Conrad Murray. Mm -hmm. And in his attempt to convince me what a great doctor he was, he explained that when Conrad Murray performs cardioversion, which is an electrical shock to the chest, right. he doesn't start an intravenous, he just puts the propofol straight into the vein. And yes, my eyes got big as well because I said, well, Mr. Flanagan, you have impressed me, but not in the manner in which you, you intended. That is the most unequivocally reckless way of conducting a cardioversion. Really? It just simply ignores the basics of anesthesia safety. And did they call you back? Uh, no, they realized I was not going to testify yeah, in favor I, 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 of them. I can imagine. And we'll get more into Dr. Conrad Murray and what he did in just a second. But first, I want you to describe to me what we have here. What, okay. this, is, this is the propofol administration process. Right. Okay. In the front, we have what's called a pulse oximeter. And anybody who's seen any medical shows knows that the patient has a sensor on their fingertip. And if you listen carefully, you can hear that there's a sound as well as a waveform. And what happens when the patient's oxygen goes down is the tone goes from beep, beep, beep to beep, 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 beep. You don't need a medical degree to realize something bad is happening to that patient and someone needs to watch and take care of the airway to prevent all the oxygen running out and the patient's heart stopping and their brain dying. So a patient getting propofol needs to be watched at all times. Absolutely. And you can either watch them if you're physically present or vicariously present. There are these devices that people use for baby monitors to listen to the baby breathing. If you have to leave the room, you use a baby monitor, and you could have listened to, Conrad, uh, to, to Michael Jackson breathing. But of course, that assumes you have any due diligence when it comes to the normal safety, safety precautions that are well established, 20 years established. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at, by the way, Michael Jackson's autopsy report. This is what they call the anesthesiology consultation. And take a look at some of the things they're saying in this. Standard of care for administering propofol was not met. No evidence of an infusion pump for control of IV infusion. No monitors found at the scene. Now, Dr. Friedberg, tell us what that means in terms of this apparatus we see here. Because this that we see is the way it should have been done. Precisely. This is an infusion pump which allows you to control absolutely how much drug is being given on a second by second basis. What you see here is an infusion bag, which is a very crude way of giving propofol. And I'd like to know if our cameras can just take a look at this infusion bag right here. And folks, if you see this, this right here, as a, just go over a little bit, please, to the other side where the white substance is. Folks, this right here that you see my pen going over, this is the propofol. That's why they call it milk. You see that milky color? Exactly. Okay. Michael wasn't the first person to call it milk of anesthesia or call it as milk. It's, it's a very common expression. Okay. So at any rate, at the very least, someone has to have eyes on the patient mm -hmm. and a pulse oximeter. Now, a brain monitor is clearly above Conrad Murray's pay grade. Okay. okay? But what does this brain monitor do? What the brain monitor does Because is... this is something else that wasn't at the scene. Exactly. Okay. The brain monitor is connected to a sensor on the forehead and it gives us a number between 0 and 100 that lets us know exactly how the propofol is affecting the brain. All of these vital signs here tell us how your brain stem is functioning, but what you want, you want to know this for sure, but you also want to know how the upper part, the cortex of the brain is being affected so that you can give what I call Goldilocks anesthesia, not too much, not too little, always just the right amount because you're measuring, you're not guessing. So we've got this apparatus right here. Right. It's right here on set with us. Here's my question for you. Dr. Conrad Murray, maybe his attorneys would argue, well, you've got the apparatus right here. You're able to administer it right here. Why can't he do it in a home? Why does it have to be in a surgical setting? Well, he could have done it in a home, mm -hmm. but he didn't take, he, it wasn't the propofol that killed Michael Jackson. It was the unsafe manner in which it was being given. Mm. Now, the defense is going to claim that they had a pulse oximeter, but because Murray was out of the room, he couldn't hear it. Well, that's the same thing as not having a, a pulse oximeter at all, okay? Like I said, sure, if you have to leave the room, have a baby monitor and you can hear the, pro the pulse oximeter from outside the room or you could hear Mr. Jackson 
breathing. 